Hey, it's Mark Henry, author of Dancing with Energy, Healing, Magic, and Mysticism. I'm just going to give a video today about a different subject, which is going to be the four fun facts about werewolves and the paranormal. The reason why I'm doing a video on werewolves, I've been getting uh, quite a few requests on werewolves. And I must admit that um, I actually had to do um, some research on this because I am not very much a, um expert in werewolves. So, um, just please bear with me. Uh, so when I, we're thinking about werewolves, what commonly comes to mind, at least in my mind, and I know that there's been always changes in stories and things about werewolves themselves, uh, the typical uh, man who turns into a wolf by the light of the full moon and the only way to kill it is by some type of um, silver or silver bullet. Um, the wolf uh, creature has, you know, superhuman strength and speed, and there have been a number of mo werewolf movies over the ages. It's, it doesn't seem to be as popular in the last decade or so as uh, some others. Uh, I think that, you know, big thing has been zombies in the last 10 years, so it seems like each horror creature has their different fashion. Uh, I remember you know, maybe a decade before that, vampires were pretty big. And then you have um, the you have the cross, you have the vampire and werewolves movies. So you'll have um, things like um, you know Twilight, and you'll have um, various other things. The um, series with uh, Kate Beckinsale. I'm trying to think of the name, but anyway, I'm going to move on. All right, so fun fact number one about werewolves. Um, we just spoke about Twilight. Okay, so Twilight partially had it right. Um, if you remember, if you've seen Twilight, um, Twilight is about two families, vampires, werewolves, who are this way due to heredity. And the werewolf side, uh, the main character is uh, Jacob Black, and Jacob Black is part of the, I believe it's called the Kulu tribe uh, in the Pacific Northwest. Um, and their reservation is La Push. Now, coincidentally enough, maybe it's not coincidental, you know, maybe Stephanie Myers did um, her research, is that there is a Kulu tribe in the Pacific Northwest and their reservation is called La Push. However, that's where it stops. Um, I believe that this particular tribe was um, kind of angry at Stephanie Myers, the creator of uh, Twilight, because of, uh, I guess, some of the liberties she took in the, the novel, which is fiction, um, and added some things, and they weren't too pleased about it in reference to themselves. So, uh, just for the record, the um, Twilight mythology, that's doesn't correspond to the actual historical uh, Kilut lore and beliefs. Uh, however, they, ha they do have a connection to wolves, werewolves, that type of thing. Uh, their connection is this, that there was once a shapeshifter, a um, magician, a mystic who was traveling through, um, I guess, the area which is now considered their land and he turned a wolf into a man. And that man became the first member of the Kilut tribe. And from there, you know, their tribe developed from what I understand. So that's kind of part of their mythology. Uh, there is nothing as far as I know in their mythology about, you know, man turning back into, into wolf, but they are thought to um, descend from wolves. So it's still a connection, but Twilight kind of had it wrong. So, uh, number two, uh, in case you've ever heard of Dion Fortune, uh, Dion Fortune was a magician, occultist in the early part of the 20th century, prolific writer. Her main uh, book, I believe, is Psychic Self Defense. Um, I had it at one time. Uh, she is considered one of the OG magicians of the early part of the 20th century. So with Dion Fortune, 
uh, there's this particular story about her kind of thinking about someone who wronged her. Someone did something, as the story goes. And she was kind of mulling over it, ruminating about it. This was near bedtime. She was in her bed, and she started to think about the Norse wolf god. And while she was resting, all of a sudden she felt something while she was thinking of the Norse god and still mulling over this thing that this person did and the person, she felt something being drawn out of, their so out of her solar plexus. And in the next moment she looked over and there was a large wolf in her bed. So she was quite startled and she tried to capture the wolf magically, but it went into a corner and then it took off. Now apparently the neighbors saw this wolf and were quite frightened. Um, eventually she caught up with this wolf and was able to magically draw, draw the wolf back into her center. So this is a kind of an example of an accidental servitor. Who knows if the, the, the wolf energy, the, the, the form, might have actually gone out and tried to hurt whoever wronged her. We won't know. Okay. Three is that wolf men, wolf hybrids, wolf creatures, that they typically are seen by shamans, mystics. In fact, sometimes they even seek out these creatures in order to obtain wisdom, to obtain knowledge. Um, sometimes they even will take uh, entheogens, the psychedelics, in order to connect with these. We can connect with the spirit world and try to call upon these creatures. So we're talking about astral travel and we're talking about interacting with the spirit world. There are um, these wolf-like beings supposedly inhabited there. All right, so number four. Uh, werewolves are a part of, uh, in shape-shifting, are part of Navajo witchcraft. There are shapeshifters and there are magicians who are often called skinwalkers who will shapeshift into wolves and attend meetings. Meetings uh, to discuss, you know, um, witchcraft and their magic and all this type of stuff. All, Navajo, in Navajo witchcraft, the wolf also is uh, present in some of their lore about these magicians, these sorcerers who would create these potions that would cause TB, tuberculosis in people. And what they would do is they would use their werewolf creatures in order to pour it on them or throw it into the fire of the person who's the target. So werewolf kind of, I guess, in a more uh, sinister type of uh, fashion. And by the way, I, I just mentioned a minute ago about shape-shifting into werewolves, into wolf creatures, is that these wolf, um, the shape-shifting into the wolf creatures are supposedly can move very, very quickly. So there are reports, I think in the 1940s, of these interviews with uh, Navajos and their some of their uh, mystics, which kind of, of course, kind of said that, you know, these mystics, these magicians could go, what would call it, a car could go an hour, could go in within a few minutes. So, does this mean that they were astrally traveling and sent into some type of wolf form energetically, or whether it was an actual type of of wolf. I think probably the former. Um, I don't myself believe that werewolves exist in a necessarily in a physical sense. I believe that one can project their consciousness into animals and to feel the energy of the animals. Um, but I don't believe in the kind of the traditional transformation that is typically seen in kind of Hollywood horror. 
So, in any case, this is uh, Mark Henry, and please like and subscribe. Uh, I'm going to put some interesting links in the bottom if you want to check out my book. Um, also, if you want to support some of my work, I'm on Patreon. All right. I will see you in a future video. Thank you very much.